Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how I manage my time as a software developer and also a tech entrepreneur. For those of you who don't know, I am a full-time software developer Monday through Friday at IBM and then on the side I have my business Tiff and Tech. I want to speak to you today about really how I have found the balance in order to be able to do both and do both successfully, share with you some tips that worked for me, some that didn't work for me, and so much more. Before we get started though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for your comments, feedback, questions, all of the above. You all are just amazing. Also, as a side note, you will notice that my setup is very different than usual. It is because I am working from home. I went back to uh, my parents' house this past weekend, which was so great to catch up with family and uh, have a little downtime. So hence the setup is a little different. There are so many things I wish I knew when I was first starting out, both managing my time as a software developer, but also to having my own tech business. And it's really an art that once you figure it out, you're like, okay, this is so much easier. But until you get in that rhythm and really find out how to balance everything, it can be very overwhelming. I'm really excited to dive in and share some good tips with you. But before we do that, I want to say a big shout out to Magic for sponsoring part of this video. Magic offers some amazing dedicated assistance that can really help you in being able to delegate what work you want to do and what these assistants can do. There is nothing more important in my opinion than really finding out what work is really prioritized that you need to do and what work that can be passed on to an assistant to do. Having an assistant can completely change your, honestly, your life, your day to day. And especially when it's a dedicated assistant, I mean, the amount that I have noticed in my productivity and being able to focus on what really matters since getting one is mind blowing. Not to mention they have screened over 10,000 dedicated assistants since 2015. So they know what they're doing. I also linked Magic down in the description so you can go check them out. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I do, no matter what day it is, is plan out my day. Having both the software development side of things and then running a business, obviously my day is very busy. And even if you're just doing one or the other, it's extremely busy. And having an idea of what I need to get done throughout the day is so key for me. I usually plan out my day a few days in advance. I'll do usually on Sundays. I'll sit down for about 30 minutes and schedule out my week to come. I will prioritize what absolutely needs to get completed this week um, and kind of trickle down into what would be nice to get done. From there, I will break it down day by day. So for example, I know I need to finish this website this week. Okay, well, how can I, how much time do I need to spend on it each and every day? This really helps me stay organized and not feel, what is the word, feel overwhelmed because there's so much to do in a week or in a day and really breaking down the tasks really helped me. On that note, I am a huge believer and a huge fan of time blocking. Um, I know I've spoken about this before and I know I've gotten some really amazing feedback from you who have tried time blocking as well. And essentially what time blocking is, is you are time blocking your entire day. So you are starting from uh, 8 a.m. or whatever time your morning starts at till the end of your day. And you are blocking out different kind of increments from uh, scheduling in when you will respond to emails to when you are going to be coding to everything in between. So because what a lot of people will do is they'll say, I need to get done all of these things in a day and plan out their day, but they won't account for the things that they absolutely need to get done as well, but aren't really big things, meaning uh, take out the dogs or um, what's another good one, respond to the emails or make time for responding to Slack messages, things like that. So time blocking is another huge thing for me. I honestly, it's a game changer. So if you are not someone who time blocks, I highly suggest to try it because it's, it's really good. Next on the list is start with the most important tasks. I know this sounds pretty obvious, but way too often do we put off the most important tasks if they are not the tasks that we enjoy doing the most. So maybe there is a task that is very important, but you do not enjoy doing it. So in turn, you end up pushing it off until the end of the day, and then you are too tired to do it or too burnt out, and it kind of gets pushed off till the next day. What I love to do is really prioritize that, okay, this task needs to get done. It's the most important task. Even if I don't want to do it or I really just dislike the task, if it's the first task, it needs to get done first thing. On the note of the first tasks, I shared it, I think, before on here with you, but it's something that I learned a while ago and it's a 
complete game changer, which is the ABC method. And basically when I write out different tasks that I need to complete, I will put my a A's next to the ones that are priorities that no matter what they need to get done throughout the day. The B's are nice to have, so it'd be nice to get them done, but if it waits till the next day, it's not the end of the world. And C's are more like, yeah, it'd be great if I got there, but if I didn't, they're still gonna be around tomorrow. That really helps me prioritize too and identify uh, what tasks I need to really put my energy towards. Number three, the next thing I do is work in sprints. So kind of just like, maybe it's the techie in me, but I will work in sprints. Meaning if I start work at say nine, I will time block and work till say 10, like just pure coding. And then from 10 to 10, 15, I will go, um, I don't know, get a tea or go for a walk or any of the above. But rather than just thinking, oh, I have all these tasks I need to complete by the end of day, I really try and break down my day with little rewards almost that if I know I achieve this or I complete uh, this hour of coding or things like that, I can take a little bit of time, time off and a little bit of a break. And that brings me to my fourth tip, which is do not, contrary to popular popular belief, do not multitask. Multitasking has been, for me anyways, one of the worst things that I used to do. I used to think I could respond to emails while on a call, while trying to code or whatever the case may be. And in the end, I end up getting things done poorly or not well, or not even done at all sometimes. And that's where having a dedicated assistant has really helped me as well and changed the game for me. Knowing that I can pass on what kind of work I need to uh, for them to do that can take a lot off of my plate. And I wanna to touch here again on Magic because I have been using Magic, uh, the dedicated assistant for a while and honestly, I don't know how I functioned without it before. I'll pull up on the website here. You can see there is no long-term commitment, which is huge. And as I mentioned, only $10 an hour. And because these dedicated assistants are pre-screened, they are hand-picked for your business. So what is best for your business and uh, kind of the industry you are in. Once again, I linked them down below, so make sure to go check them out. This is such a great way to get a dedicated assistant and also take some work off of your plate. And that brings me to my last and final tip that really helps me, which is delegate certain tasks. For too long, I thought I needed to do it all by myself and have it all figured out. And that's not the case. You should work with people who are smarter than you, who are more specialized than you, all of the above. And that's how you continue to grow and learn too. And when I realized that and I started delegating some tasks of things that I'm not good at because no one is good at everything. For me, I am terrible with writing. So delegating tasks of, okay, can you uh, read over this or edit this kind of piece of content I am writing or even when it comes to the software development side of things, delegating tasks, more so meaning if I'm stuck for a long time, not being afraid to ask a question. So I guess it's not really delegating a task, but it is in the sense that I'm not just gonna stay stuck or remain in one place, but keep on moving forward. And that will make such a big difference. I hope you really enjoyed this video and kind of got some more insight as to how I manage my time, both as a software developer and also to an entrepreneur. It definitely is an art and it's something I am so passionate about talking about because I think if you do it right and you kind of find that sweet spot, you can excel really in so many different areas. And there's so many little things like that I shared, even with the time blocking, that will make such a big difference. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.